We're closer to landing on Mars now than ever before. Private companies like SpaceX are achieving new feats in rocket science, the likes of which we've never seen. But rockets will only take us so far. There are more problems unique to Mars that still stand in our way. One of them is, where would we live? Mars is a desolate desert pretty much no matter where you look. It's not like there are any oceans or snow-capped mountains to help us decide where to settle down. But that hasn't stopped this guy from trying to figure it out. Our main goal is to investigate if it is possible to grow crops on Mars and Moon soil uh, for people when they go over there and live there. Waymlink and his colleague Line Chug have actually made a map of where we should live on Mars. The map accounts for radiation levels, climate, terrain, and perhaps most importantly, the soil. We looked at the amount of nutrients in the soil, for instance, calcium, magnesium, and also other nourishment like phosphates and nitrates. So what you would normally expect in manure. And we also looked at the amount of ice that is available. It is not uh, the same everywhere on Mars. There are areas where there's almost no ice and there are areas with a lot of ice. The most habitable places are labeled in dark blue on the map and we're pretty familiar with some of these locations. For example, Acidalia Planitia is just north of where NASA's Viking 1 and Mars Pathfinder landed. However, it looks like we should probably steer clear of some of Mars's inactive volcanoes, like Olympus Mons and Elysium Mons. But how does Waymlink know whether crops will grow at all on Mars? Take a look at his Mars garden. The conditions in the soil here are as similar as possible to what we might find on Mars. He's been harvesting it for the last five years, and he's had some amazing success so far. Well, it's been a big surprise from the beginning that many plants are able to grow on it. The growth is almost the same as if you would use normal uh, potting soil from Earth. It's not completely the same, but we are getting there. We had huge harvest of green beans, also tomatoes, but carrots are growing fine, even potatoes. So many different types of crops we are now able to grow. Waymlink hopes that his work will help lay the foundations for the first Martian farms. After all, it's not like we can send regular food payloads to Mars. It takes about 10 months to even get there, and practical launch windows only open once every two years. On top of that, astronauts can only bring so much freeze-dried food with them, so they'll have to learn to grow their own food indoors on Mars if we are ever going to live there for long periods of time. But Waymlink hasn't just been growing plants. He's also figured out how to make the process as efficient and successful as possible. The secret? Earthworms. That's right, earthworms might be some of the first living things on Mars next to humans. When you're on Mars, you want to have a closed system. So everything has to be reused and worms help with that. Earthworms feed on the dead, decaying parts of plants that we won't eat, but that's still an essential part of the system. They break the plant matter down during digestion so that when they return it to the soil, it actually makes the soil more fertile. But the most surprising thing was that they could survive in Waymlink's Martian soil in the first place. What the biggest surprise was, uh, First of all, that they survived because we know that uh, the Martian soil is uh, rather sharp. They have really sharp edges. When you look under, under the microscope to the soil, you see that. And well, since the worms eat the soil, they get it into their gut. And it would be the same as we, eh, as humans, would eat uh, a glass that is broken. And I expect it, that the worms may get hurt from it, but apparently, they are able to cope with it, and they survive, and they don't, didn't even survive, they had some offspring. And that was the big surprise for us. One of Waymlink's next big experiments is to perfect the Martian potato. Turns out, potatoes grow extremely well in Waymlink's garden, but they just don't grow to be very large. And that's something we have to solve, because then you get potatoes that are very small and not very tasty. So that is what we're going to try to solve this year in the greenhouse with a special uh, variety of potatoes. With one more seemingly impossible hurdle behind us, Mars seems closer than ever.